Okay, so my name is Mr. Altamira. For those of you who don't have me as your math teacher, I am that other math teacher you see all the way down at the end of the hall. And this is our study guide for both my class and Miss Gaskin's class. So, let me take a second and explain what you should be doing right now. First of all, if you have not done this study guide already, then go ahead and stop watching immediately and go on to Canvas and look for this assignment. Okay, so do that first. Second is if you took this study guide and you got a 100% on your very first try, you can also stop watching this because if you got a 100, that means you're not really going to need to stop and review any of this. Now, if you did not get a 100, it doesn't matter if you got a 50, it doesn't matter if you got a 10, it doesn't matter if you got a 99. If you did not get a 100, you need to stay and watch. Now, when you were finished, it, the study guide gave you a grade on the screen, and it allowed you to scroll through and see what questions you got right and which questions you got wrong. What this video is here to do is to guide you through which questions you might have gotten wrong and how you can fix them, what you were supposed to do, and some tips for dealing with these types of problems if they show up on the test tomorrow. A reminder, the questions will not be exactly the same. They will be similar, and the way that you solve them will be the same, but the questions are not going to be the same. So, uh, the plan is, if you missed maybe one or two questions, feel free to skip around in this video and look for those questions that you missed. The entire video isn't really going to help you. If you missed maybe about half the questions, if you got a 50% or less on this study guide, you should probably just stay and watch the entire video. And then, later on, when you feel like enough time has passed, come back and check the study guide again. See if you can remember how these questions were supposed to be solved. Or look at the practice test that we took yesterday on Wednesday and see how you did on that. But that's enough for the directions. Now we'll get started. For number one, this is asking what is the area of the parallelogram below? So here we have a parallelogram, and for a parallelogram, all we need is the formula area equals the base times the height. So we just need a base and height. So the base would match this line, which it looks like the base we're going to use 15.5. And for the height, we want to be looking for these right triangle symbols. Now, this 3.2, this is just kind of following a dotted line. That's not part of the shape. We don't need the 3.2 there. This 6.5 is following a dotted line also, but this one is connected to a right angle, and more importantly, it is going straight up and down. So for number one, we wanted to do area is 6.5 times 15.5. So we'll just go ahead and type that in, 15.5 times 6.5. So number one, we should have gotten 100.75. Let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. So number two, what is the area of this triangle below? So again, we're going to look for my right angle symbol. That lets me know what the base and the height is. So my base is going to be 15 and my height is going to be 20. The 25 is a diagonal. We are not supposed to use that one. So let me grab my calculator. So we're going to do base, 15, times the height, which is 20. But this is a triangle. So I have to do the base times the height and divide by 2. Or uh, Ms. Gaskins has also taught 1 half times the base times the height. The result will be the same. The correct answer for number 2 was supposed to be 150. If you got 300, that is because you either forgot to divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. But the bottom line is you should be doing base times height, and that number should be cut in half to form a triangle. For number 3, a little bit of both of those last two problems. For this one, we look for my right angle, and we can see we're going to need our base, which is 20, and our height, which is 10. And these 12s will not be used because they are diagonal. And, again, this is a triangle, so we will have to multiply 
one half times the base times the height. So go ahead and type that in. So the base times the height and divide oops and divide by two. And I get one hundred for this one. So number three, the answer we were looking for was one hundred. For number four, this is the first one that requires us to decompose a shape because we don't have a formula for finding area of a shape like this. But we are going to cut the shape up into a triangle and a rectangle. Now the rectangle we can already see has a base of 20. So this red line I'm drawing is going to go 20 feet. We can also see that the length of the entire line that is down here, this blue line looks almost black just with how dark of a blue it is, this dark blue line is going to be 28 feet. So if I were to take this section right here and cut it up, we have 28 feet for the whole shape, but 20 of those feet are being taken up by this rectangle. And what that means for us is that we are going to have to, well, we're going to have to do a bit of subtraction here. This other section, this slightly lighter blue, is going to be what is remaining after we do 28 total feet minus the red section, which is 20 feet. 28 minus 20 gives me a base, I don't know why I'm writing it too, gives me a base of 8 feet for my triangle. And now we have enough information to actually solve this problem. So for this, we've got the rectangle, which is base times height, 20 times 7. You can use a calculator if you want, but I'm letting you know now 20 times 7 would be 140. Then for our triangle, it has a base of 8 and it has a height of 7. So we do base times height, 8 times 7, and divide by 2. So 8 times 7 divided by 2 would give me an area of 28 feet. So those are the areas of both parts. All we have to do now is add them together, 140 plus 28, to get our correct answer of 168. Uh, if you did this the first time and you got 196, that could mean that you did everything right but forgot to divide the area of the triangle by 2. So let's go ahead and move on from there. Number 5, just like the last problem but a little bit easier even. What we did here is we got a rectangle that has a base and height, 14 and 12, and a triangle. And the triangle already tells us the height, and we can see what the base of that triangle is going to be as well. The base of that triangle is just going to be 14, because it is the same as the base of the rectangle. So, for the rectangle piece, we're just going to do uh, the base, 14, times the height, 14 times 12. So the rectangle is 168 square inches. And the triangle has a base of 14 and a height of 7. It is a triangle, so we need to remember to divide by 2. And we get 49 as the area for the triangle. From here, all we have to do is add them together. 49 plus 168. So the answer to this problem was 217 for question number 5. For number eight, this is the first problem that does not have a picture, and that's a warning. There will be some questions on the test tomorrow that don't have a picture. This one describes a rectangle that has a base of six centimeters and a height of two. So we have a rectangle that has a base of six, and it has a height of two, so something kind of like this. Okay. And it asks, what is the area of a triangle that has the same height and base? So if I have a triangle that has a base of 6 and a height of 2, it might look something kind of like this. 
and it's asking what is the area of the triangle. And the triangle is going to be 2 times 6, which is 12, divided by 2, which is 6 again. So watch out for number 6. If you got 12, it could be that you didn't read this part or that you read it but forgot to divide by 2 anyways. So do be careful. And number 7, just proving my point that you need to be careful, it's the same type of question, but this time it does genuinely want the area of a parallelogram. So this problem really will just be 12.8 times 7.4, just base times height. So do be very careful about that. Sometimes it'll be a simple question like this. Sometimes they'll try to trick you like that last problem. So this one, we got 94.72. Number eight, it's asking for the area of this figure right here, this pentagon. This pentagon, it's a little bit easier than maybe it should have been, but for this pentagon, we can see a square down here and a triangle up here with one trick number, this 9.9, .9, it's diagonal. That means we can't use it. We can only use numbers that form at a right angle when we find our area. So 9.9 .9 is out. We can't use it. Uh, now for our square down here. Our square has a base of 14 and it's a square so it has a height of 14 also. So the area of this shape is 196. Okay. From there we need to figure out this triangle. At first you can see that the triangle has a height of 7 and you might have to look around to figure out what line would match this red line that I've drawn. And the thing that matches it is way down here, 14. The base of that triangle is going to be 14 units. So we take the base times the height and divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. And we get 49 as the area for this top shape. The final step is to combine them, 49 plus 196, and I got 245 units for number 8. We are more than halfway done now. For number 9, this is one of the trickier uh, polygons that we're going to deal with. For this one, we have three distinct shapes. We have two triangles and we have one rectangle. Now the rectangle has a base of 4, you have to look way up here to see what the base is, and it has a height from top to bottom of 11. So for my parallelogram, we're just going to do 4 times 11, which is 44. That's going to be the area of my rectangle. Whenever I'm doing this, I like to, if I'm doing this on paper, I'll redraw the shape on a piece of paper, and when I find the area of something, I'll write what the area was and put it in that shape. That way I can keep track of which area is for which shape. For my triangles, uh, it looks like the triangles have a base of 4, both of them do, and they also both have the same height, which is 3. So to find the area of one of these triangles, we just do base times height divided by 2. So that'd be 3 times 4 divided by 2. If you're one of Ms. Gaskin's students, you'll be more familiar with 1 half times 4 times 3. Both of these are the same exact formula. It doesn't matter which one you use. And yes, you can rewrite 1 half to be 0 0.5. If you're my student and you prefer using this formula, don't worry, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Go ahead and use it if it works better for you. If you're a Ms. Gaskin's student, and this way seems to feel more comfortable for you. Again, by all means, use it. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Both formulas are equally correct. And regardless of which one you do, you will get an area of 6 inches for the triangle. For both triangles. The final step is you have to add all three of these shapes together. So we just do 44 plus 6 plus 6, which is the same as adding 12. We add this together to get our answer of 56 inches squared. So that's going to be my answer for number 9. 
for number 10, this is the last polygon question. After this, it'll be surface area. But we have a rectangle right here. And it looks like my rectangle has a base of 8 and a height of 4. So I can go ahead and do 8 times 4 to get 32 inches. That's for my rectangle. After that, we have two different triangles. One triangle has a base of three, and it's going to have a height of four, not five. Five is actually a trick number because it is diagonal. We know that the height is going to be four because, thanks to our rectangle over here. Our rectangle has a height of four, and you can see the red line of this rectangle is the same height as the blue line of this triangle. So, for our triangle, we do base times height, 3 times 4, divided by 2, which gives me 6 for this triangle. So we have 32 inches for the rectangle, 6 inches for the triangle. Keep in mind, you can already cross out this answer choice over here. That answer choice is 23, which is already too small. Next, we have this triangle, which has a base which actually I'm going to go ahead and change colors so it's even more distinct. We've got, well, that's a little close to red, but it's most it was meant to be a pink. So this pink line is going to have a length of 8 inches. We can tell that thanks to our other side of the rectangle. And the height of this is going to be 3 inches. So for this triangle, we have base, which is 8, times 3, and that gives me 24 divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half and that gives me an area of 12 for this triangle. The final step is to add them so 32 plus 12 and that's going to give you 44 plus 6 gives me an area of 50 squared inches for number 10. And from here on out, it is all surface area. So for number 11, uh, it shows a net of a rectangular pyramid or square pyramid. So this one tells us each triangle has a base of 6 and a height of 8. So that's important. We know the base of all of these are going to be 6. So all of these red lines are 6. And we know that the height for all of these shapes, all of these blue lines are going to be 8 centimeters. That's important. And coincidentally is exactly what we need to find the area of each one. So the area of one of these triangles is going to be my base times my height divided by 2 or 1 half times your base times your height. So I'm going to go ahead and find the area of one of these. We have 6 times 8 divided by 2. And I got 24 as the area for each of the triangles. So 24, 24, 24, 24. And now we need the area of my square on the inside. The area of the square is just going to be base times height, 6 times 6, which is, coincidentally, or no, it's not going to be 24, I almost made a silly mistake. 6 times 6 is 36. Don't know why I was about to say 24. So, we've got 36. And now for the final step. All we have to do is combine all five of these numbers. So, I'm going to take a shortcut and do 24 times 5. Or, excuse me, times 4, not times 5. 24 times 4, since there are 4 triangles that are 24 square centimeters. And then we're going to add that to the square. And the square was 36 squared centimeters, which gives me my final answer of 132. And you might have saw for just a second uh, there on the screen, if you forget to add that little square, you will get 96. So. Be very careful to make sure you're not forgetting any shapes when you're adding these together. For number 12, it says Karen has a cube that has side lengths of 6 inches. 
the net of the cube is shown here. So it told us each side length is six inches. So six by six. What it would be the area of one of these squares? Six times six would be 36, which means all of these squares have an area of 36. It's a cube. By definition, all of the sides are exactly the same for the whole shape. So from here, all you have to do is combine all of the areas, which would be 36 plus 36 plus 36 plus 36 plus 36 six times. Or you could take a shortcut and just do 36 times 6. So 36 times 6, and we get 216 as our answer for number 12. Let's go ahead and move on to number 13, which is our triangular prism. So our triangular prism, it looks like each of the rectangles are going to have a width of 8. So all of these pink lines that I am drawing are 8 inches long. And then we're going to have, let's have some green lines to represent the height of some of them. This rectangle and this rectangle will have a height of 5 inches, but the middle rectangle is different. The middle rectangle, this orange line, is going to have a height of 6 inches. Okay, This will happen sometimes. The rectang or, or triangular pyramids or pure prisms will have different lengths for some of the rectangles. And now for the height of the triangles, which will represent that with, uh, let's go with like a dark blue. The height of the triangles, which will be four. All right, we now have all the information we need to find the area of each of them. For my rectangles, these are going to be eight inches by five inches for two of them at least. So eight times five gives me 40 for both this and this rectangle. Both of those rectangles are the same size. The middle rectangle is larger. The middle rectangle is going to be six times eight. So we have a base of eight and a height of six. That's going to give me an area of 48 for my middle rectangle, okay? Lastly, our triangles. Our triangles have a height of four, we can see that here, and they have a base of six. So for the triangles, we do four by six, but remember to divide them by two or multiply by one half, and we get an area of 12 for each of them. The final step in this crazy puzzle is to add them all together. So we do 40 plus 48 plus 40 plus 12 plus 12. And that gives me an area of 152 squared inches. And that's number 13, only three to go. For number 14, yet another cube. This cube, it mentions it has side lengths that are seven millimeters for each side. That means all of these sides are all seven, okay? And what that also means is that the area for each one of these squares is going to be seven times seven, which is 49 for all of those squares. So number 14, we have seven times seven, which is 49, and we would add 49 six times or I'm going to take a shortcut and just multiply it by six since there would be six of them. And that gives us 294 millimeters squared for number 14. Only two problems left now. For number 15, the net of a rectangular pyramid is shown below. And this kind of gives an example that not all rectangular pyramids are going to have the same size triangles. For this one, it looks like my rectangle in the middle has a height of 7 and a base of 10. Now, base times height for the rectangle would just be 70. But my triangles will be different. See, this triangle up top has a base of 10 
and it has a height of 12. So for this top triangle, we do 10 times 12, which is 120, divide it by 2, and we get an area of 60 centimeters squared for this triangle. But if we look over here, this triangle has a base of 7 centimeters, and it has a height of 12.5. So this one will be different. So this triangle, the base is 7 times 12.5, and divide by 2 since it is a triangle and we get 43.75 so 43.75 for this and as you can plainly see this triangle and this triangle will be the same so 43.75 this triangle and this triangle will be the same so 60 the final step is to add all of those areas together. So 70 plus the top triangle plus the bottom plus the left triangle plus the right triangle. Oh, I accidentally just deleted all of it. All right, well, 70 plus 60 plus 60. All right, let's click the right button this time. And I got 277.5. Now, this is not an answer choice, which brings me to show you this. The sentence is asking, what is the approximate surface area of this rectangular pyramid? That means you're supposed to round. Whatever answer you get, you're not going to get the exact correct answer. They want you to round to the closest answer that is available, which in this case would be 280. That's what we wanted to happen for number 15. And then last but not least, number, oh wait, nope, there's one more after this. For number 16, this one shows a cube, but it doesn't show us the entire cube unfolded. What I want you to do when you see this problem is think about what we did for this problem. We found the area of one of the squares and then multiplied it by 6 because it is a cube and it will have the same area for all six cubes. Do the same exact thing with this type of shape. If it says that it is a cube and one of the side lengths is 2 inches, that means the area of this front face of the cube is going to be 2 by 2. What's 2 times 2? It's 4. So the area of one of these squares is going to be 4 inches squared. But how many squares are there in a cube? 6. So you have to do 4 times 6, and that's going to give you your answer of 24 for number 16. Be very careful with this type of problem. There is one exactly like it on the test that's tomorrow. Obviously, it's not going to say 2 inches, but it will be solved the same way. And then the final question, it shows the net of a triangular pyramid, and it tells you all of the triangles are equilateral triangles. All of the triangles are exactly the same shape and size. So as long as we find one of them, we have found all of them. And if we look at the triangle in the middle, it has a base of 14, and it has a height of 12.1. So easy enough for this one. We do the base, 14, times the height, 12.1, oops, 14 times 12.1. Make sure you are very careful when you are using a calculator that you don't accidentally type something wrong or click something wrong, because getting a question wrong for something as silly as that, well, it's silly. So we multiply those together, and remember to divide by 2. And we get 84.7. That's really close to 85. Let's just go ahead and round that to 85. So we'll say the area of one of these triangles is 85 for one. Remember, there's more than one of them. There are going to be four triangles that are exactly like that. So what we have to do is do 85 times there are four of them and we get our answer 340 which is this one right here 
And that's going to do it. That is the entire study guide. Uh, if you watched the whole thing because you needed help for the whole thing, great. I'm glad that you stuck around and made sure to double check everything. That's good. Uh, but that is going to be it for the study guide. Uh, just a reminder, if you didn't do very well and you wanted to try this again, by all means, try the study guide again. It's not like the tests that make you wait eight hours before you reattempt. You can retry the study guide as many times and as fast as you want. Just keep in mind, the more you do the same question, the more likely it is you're just remembering the answer. Make sure you wait a few minutes or a, maybe an hour between trying the study guide again. That way you're really testing yourself on how to solve the problem, not just what the answer was. But that is going to do it for me. Good luck tomorrow, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.